Hi there, everyone. Meteorologist Robert Spetty here with you today. It is currently the 1st of July, 2014. And what we are watching across the Western Pacific and Eastern Asia today is several areas. Tropics really just uh, starting to blow up here on the 1st of July. We're starting to get into the active part of the season. We do have a low pressure area, actually, not really a low pressure area, more of a tropical wave over the Philippines today. And that's going to bring some scattered showers, even that risk of a few strong thunderstorms that could produce some flooding and landslides in a few local areas, specifically across parts of uh, Visayas, northern Mindanao, and also in the southern Luzon. But the thing with this one, I don't expect this to develop into a tropical depression. This is likely not going to become a name storm system but the focus of this update today is really going to be back here towards the east because that's where we're going to be seeing that threat of a name storm system and it's over towards invest 90 w that's the nomenclature being put on this low at this time really out there around chuk and potentially could form into a tropical depression sometime later on this week and become the next name storm system neoguri which would be the name um the japan meteorological agency will give this its international name at least and uh this really could be our first storm system that could potentially become a typhoon i'm not saying it's going to be but potentially uh, become one and uh, impact directly some land areas as a strong storm system for 2014. So this is really going to be the big topic. And um, let's take a look actually at the satellite imagery because at this time I keep on saying potentially and what could be happening with this because it is at this time very disorganized. <clears throat> you can see in the satellite picture, but let's actually zoom in on the visible imagery and i mean it's just spotty cloud cover around this there's a lot of convection but it's not organized it's not clearly circulating and what we are going to be looking at through the coming days is this at least according to a lot of model looks becoming more organized take a look at the streamline and or actually first let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures and this does have a lot of heat energy and that's one reason why i think this does have that potential actually as it does push past guam i mean take a look at that some areas out here 30 to 34 degrees sea surface temperature and that's just baking that's hot tub type of water and pro likely will give you a lot of energy into the storm system. Vertical wind shear is also down 5 to 10 knots across much of the tropics, especially south of Guam. So you have warm sea surface temperatures, low vertical wind shear. The convection is there, and it, it is starting to circulate, and at least it does look like that is going to be the case for the next several days. So you get all these ingredients in place, and that really poses the threat of the storm system becoming something significant as we take a look ahead actually it also is south of the west pack high and in, that is going to allow this ample time before recurving to also become an organized storm system so i think later on this week we could see something near guam now is guam going to be directly impacted by this storm system i think not actually i think it very well could move south of guam and what we're going to be seeing is more of some gradient-induced winds out here. And let's actually go ahead and pull up the wind chart. Uh, this is the ECMWF model via Meteo uh, Earth. And what we're going to be looking at is our low-pressure center right here. Uh, this is my Wednesday and the Thursday. And we have that tight gradient off towards north with the West Pack High over in this area. So you could be seeing, well, some areas across the Mariana Islands. And actually, I'll go ahead and pull this up really quick here for you, the, the winds. Um, some areas across the Mariana Islands, uh, upwards of about 17 to 20, 25 kilometers per hour. You can see it there in the bottom left of the screen as this does push off. And you could even see around 30 kilometers per hour, I think, at times. But the bigger topic is going to be later on. Now, this is going to continue to work its way off there towards the west. You have the West Pack High, like I said, off there towards the north. So that's going to stop this from recurving and basically shooting off in a northerly projection. But this could develop even more so. And it does look like very well could become a tropical storm by the end of the week there into the weekend. ECMWF, actually one of the more passive models. You want to see a strong model outlook. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the GFS. Now, as I showed you just a second ago before I get into this, 
you do have the Westpac High over here, right? Well, what we have is a little bit of a gap between the Westpac High and kind of the subtropical ridge. So it depends on how strong the subtropical ridge is to exactly where the storm system is going to be going and how strong it very well could get. So I'm going to show you a few of these models. You have to remember this storm system very well could sway all the way from just recurving heading out to sea and impacting the Izu Islands or coming on shore around Okinawa, much of the southern Japanese islands, or could even impact Taiwan. Right now at this time, still long range, but my bet would be some sort of recurvature in kind of skimming across the southern Japanese islands. My bet at this time. We'll see how that follows through later on. All right, let's take a look at some of these long range model outlooks. Now this is our good old GFS. This is for the 7th of July. It's one week from today, Monday. And uh, what we're going to be seeing, at least according to this one, is a fairly strong storm system. This is based on the 12 UTC run. Uh, actually, I'll go ahead and pull up the latest. This is the 18 UTC. And what we have is our storm system kind of working its way off there towards the north, uh, basically recurving, but then moving straight into the southern Japanese islands and then eventually shooting off there across western portions of Japan. The big thing, though, is that if this scenario was to take place, I want you to remember there's a few things that could happen here. If it goes like this and eventually off towards Japan, this is where you're going to be seeing that heaviest rainfall, and I think the biggest threat. For Okinawa, that would be a good situation. Actually, it, you would probably see a lot of strong northerly winds, but less moisture because it's going to start to get wrapped up. Bulk of the rough weather is going to be along the eastern periphery. With that said, if the storm system actually moved here over towards Ichigaki, that would put you in the right front quadrant, and it would be a very nasty day. Actually, typhoon strength winds, potentially heavy rainfall, high waves coming in from the south. So these are just a few scenarios. Now, there is one thing that I can say for certain. This, even if the storm system is going to recurve off here towards the north and eventually impact those of you in Japan, um, we are going to be seeing an enhanced monsoon threat. GFS has actually been very jumpy on another storm developing in around Luzon as well. And I think that's just it picking up on that enhanced monsoon and maybe a secondary low developing into that. But the biggest thing is that as we see the storm system track up around Guam and eventually off there towards the north, it will be pulling in the moisture across Visayas and Luzon. And I think I'm, you know what, I'm pretty confident on that, that we are going to see flooding along the western seaboards of the Philippines starting this weekend and basically throughout the early part of next week. I know that's still long range and uh, some of you may think, well, we still have to watch a storm system and see how it develops. But uh, if the models and most of them are pretty in agreement that this will develop into something, that enhanced monsoon will happen. That is always what happens and it's likely going to be once again the same scenario actually that's the gfs we can go back to your uh, ecmwf model and just show you what they're showing as well a little bit weaker of a storm but you still see those strong winds coming in from the south let's go ahead and pull up the no gaps um this is your nav gem model right here i'll go ahead and put that up on the screen and they're being very aggressive on the storm system developing. Actually, look at that, just screaming right off there towards the southern Japanese islands. Now this is looking at Tuesday of next week. So one week out, still a lot of time to watch it. It still could change its course. But even in this scenario, you still have that enhancement of the monsoon. So flooding very well potentially could be a problem. Uh, if this does follow through, this is going to be a wicked early season storm, though, for the southern Japanese islands. Um, we definitely want to continue to keep an eye on it. Uh, that is three models I've just showed you for just purposes of showing you more. I mean, this is a JMA model, and that also has a strong storm system impacting the southern Japanese islands. So we have at least four to five good global models that I just showed you here all in agreement. So this is when we start to really kind of perk up our eyebrows, our ears start to perk out, and uh, we start to watch these storm systems and the model outlooks and just the weather in the tropics very closely. So every day I'm going to be putting out a video update, uh, keeping you informed on how this develops. Please follow us on our Facebook page.
and uh, ask us any questions you may have. We're going to give you the information as it comes in, though. Right now, I, if I was, um, I mean, I'm in Tokyo, and I think this could potentially be a big, big rainmaker, but I think more so from Shikoku, Kyushu, southern Japanese islands, Taiwan. You want to watch for the potential of this storm system impacting you directly, but if you're in the Philippines, indirectly through that enhancement of the monsoon. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And we're going to keep you updated. All right, guys. Stay safe out there. And uh, once again, thanks for watching. Bye.